to church this morning. It's good to see all of your faces. Would you uh, stand with us and worship this morning? against 
church <laughs> this uh this uh the group up here and this worship set might look a little different than you're used to coming in here but um i'm really excited about this morning i'm really excited to just kind of get to step into his presence in a different way and the lord's been talking to me about a bunch of very specific things this week and um and i don't know what kind of week you've had if it's been a been a great week or a rough week but this morning, we just want to, we want to learn something new from him and we want to be able to, to press into his presence. And uh, this week, I, I don't know if Kathy Svee is here, but this week I got to do a study with Kathy and we started going through a book on the difference between the, the, bio, the church that's talked about in the Bible, the church that Jesus is trying to establish and what our church is now and how we press into culture in some ways more than the, the biblical church. And, uh, and that, that study pointed us to Amos. And it's, in Amos, he's talking to the Israelites who at this time that this book is being written, the Israelites were thriving. They had, it says they had bowls of, bowls of wine and lots of fattened calves. They were doing so well. So well, in fact, that they thought that they were exempt from the judgment of the Lord. They were looking forward to the day of the Lord, thinking that they were exempt from any hard times that were gonna happen. And he was gonna elevate them to this great spot and give them more authority. So in here it says, in, uh, starting in chapter six, it says, woe to those who are at ease in Zion, to those who feel, who feel secure on the Mount of Samaria. It goes on to say, woe to those who lie on beds of ivory and stretch themselves out on their couches and eat lambs from the flock and calves from the midst of the stall, who sing idle songs to the sound of a harp. And like David invented for themselves instruments of music, who drink wine and bowls and anoint themselves the finest oils and are not grieved over the ruin of Joseph. He's saying, how dare you put more stock in the tradition without having actually a relationship with me? How dare you take all of the fattened calves and drink these bowls of wine and sit at ease in Zion instead of actually pursuing a relationship with me? I do not care about your tradition. I don't care about your religion. I just want a relationship. I think a lot of the times that's what we do here. We, st we step in on Sunday and we say, I'm great. I'm doing wonderful. I don't need the Lord, but I'll come because it's my tradition but that's really not what we're here for. So this next song is called Make Room. Um, and the bridge says, shake up the ground of all my tradition, break down the walls of all my religion, your way is better. We don't wanna just come here on a Sunday because it's the religion of it, but we wanna be pursuing the God that we know is powerful and that we know deserves all the praise. Not to say that the way that we do church is bad, but that we want his way more than we want our own. So um, this chorus just, we're gonna sing through this chorus one time and would you just take a while and take a while and just kind of evaluate your heart and where you're at with this. Do we make room for him or do we make room for our Sunday mornings? So the chorus just goes like this. And I will make room for you. To do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, and I will make room for you. To do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to. Sing that one more time. I'll make room. I will make room for you. To do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, and I will make room for you. To do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, and here's where I lay it down. Here is where. This is my surrender, this is my surrender, here is where I lay it down, every lie and every doubt, this is my surrender.
to do whatever you want to to do whatever you want to do and I will make room for you to do whatever you want to to do whatever you want to so here's where I lay it down here is where This is my surrender, this is my surrender, here is where I lay it down, every lie and every doubt, this is my surrender. do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, and I will make room for you, to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, Jesus, oh, we make room for you, Holy Spirit, oh, it's only shake up the ground and shake up the ground of all my tradition break down the walls of all my religion your way is better your way is better shake up the ground of all my tradition break down the walls of all my religion your way is better your way is better the ground of all my tradition break down the walls of all my religion your way is better your way is better shake up the ground of all my tradition break down the walls of all my religion your way is better your way is better To do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, and I will make room for you. To do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to. where I lay it down and here is where I lay it down every burden every crown this is my surrender this is my surrender here is where I lay it down every lie and every doubt this is my surrender this is my surrender Jesus, we surrender all to you. Oh, we trust you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus and just to take him at his word, just to rest upon him. Just to know the safe the Lord and Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I proved Him for and all. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh, for grace to trust Him more. Oh, how sweet to 
growing up about the man who built his house on the rock, the man who built his house on the sand. Sometimes we look at those parables of Jesus and we have a hard time maybe relating, but in our world, we have a choice every single day what we will build our lives on. Are we gonna build on our own effort, our own strength, our own abilities? Are we gonna build our foundation on, on our government or our world around us? Or will we build our house on the rock, which is Jesus. And we have a choice every day because every little thing we do ultimately determines the foundation that's being laid. And I just wanna say, I, I'm, I can stand before you today and say, I recognize in my own life, my tendency is sometimes to take control, to, to try to choose my own path, my own, my own rock. And to say, if, oh, well, if I just do this, if I just put in enough effort, if I work hard enough, then things will stand strong. But we all know. Unless our foundation is on Christ, unless our house is built on Him, the storms will come, the house will fall. And so today we have a choice in everything that we do. And as we listen to the word and as we worship, to be reminded that Jesus is a strong foundation. Because you're either in a storm, coming out of a storm, or heading into a storm. 
today we have that opportunity to be reminded that He is that rock. So Jesus, we, we do truly want to live out what we just sang. We want to build our lives on You. But it's so easy to, to cut corners. It's so easy to try to find other routes and other ways, things that we can control, things that, that we can know, uh, believe that we know the outcome. But ultimately, Jesus, when we set our lives on You, we can know that it will stand strong even amidst the storms. So those today who are here and they're in the middle of storms today, I pray God that you'd be with them. You meet them in their needs. Lord, I think of um, some of our own, like Shane, who's getting ready for a surgery this week. I think for some uh, who have gone through difficult times just recently, um, facing diagnosis and um, financial issues and all those things. Some who maybe are in the middle of, of not knowing where their job's at because of changes in our economy and our world. Lord, I, I pray that your peace would come to them in the midst of the storm. I pray that as the house is shaken with the wind and the waves and all those things going on, I pray that today they would find themselves standing strong because of who you are, because you are strong and you are good. And so even when it doesn't seem good, help us remember, God, that you are not done. You're in the middle of the storm working for our benefit. And so Jesus, we lean into that today. Those of us who maybe we feel like things are going well right now, help us to not let down our guard to remember that when the storms come, we wanna stand firm. God, we give you our lives. We give you our hearts and our focus today. Pray that you'd speak to us through your word. Pray that you'd empower us through uh, giving, through fellowship, through our connection today to, to become more like you. Would you be honored in everything we do? In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey, would you turn to someone around you this morning? Let them know how glad you are to see them. Share a bit of that love of Jesus with your neighbor. Good stuff, good stuff. Well, good morning, everyone. Try not to love each other so much, okay? I know, I know you do love each other. I, I just wanna say this is a family. And so if you're new here, I hope that you have felt welcome. Um, I hope that you know we are so glad to have you a part of it. And the fact is you belong here, whether um, you believe everything, whether, whether you're on a journey, wherever you come from, whatever you've been through, we're glad that you're with us today. So I wanna say welcome. My name is John Michael. I'm one of the pastors here. And it's my privilege to share a few things that are going on and just some next steps that you might be able to take in your journey as a part of the church here. Uh, I do want to stop and say welcome to those who are watching online as well. Thanks for tuning in. I know we have people on our website, on Facebook, and on YouTube. Um, I talked to uh, someone today who was trying to find out how to get connected and stuff. So thank you for being with us today, wherever you are. Um, there's a couple of things in front of you if you're sitting in the room that I want to call your attention to. In the seat back in front or behind you are a couple cards. One says welcome on it. And this is our connect card. Um, this is just a way for you to, to let us know, hey, I was here. Here's who I am. Here's the thing about being family. It's really hard to grow and build relationships if you don't know how to be in contact. So if you would just help us out, you can fill those out. We're not gonna spam you or anything, but we'd love to just be able to stay in touch. A lot of times there's updates and things going on that we need to make sure everyone's able to get. I know a couple of weeks ago, we had um, kind of uh, ice out and about. And so we were able to hop on, on uh, online on social media real quick and say, hey, if you're traveling, please be safe. Here's some things to know. Uh, we'd love to keep you up to date. Um, and then there's a couple things that go out each week that you can be a part of as well. And so um, on the prayer card, there's another card in front of you. This is uh, just a way to say, um, we, we wanna be praying with you. Whatever you're going through, if you have someone that you're praying for, maybe you're celebrating something that God has done in your life, we'd love to celebrate with you and thank God with you. Um, and then at the bottom, there's a place to check 
if you'd like to share this with our prayer chain. There's about 95 people who receive our emails each week who say, hey, I wanna pray for and with others in our church. And so uh, we won't send it out unless you say that's okay. Um, but you can also sign up by uh, checking that little box at the bottom, writing your email address down there. We'll make sure to, uh, to add you to the list or send you a link so that you can add yourself. Um, but we are a church that believes in prayer and we'd love to be praying with you. So these are not just hard copies right here, whether you're online or if you just like me, like to do things on your phone, you can go to whitefishassembly.com slash connect or slash prayer and uh, be able to fill those out there. So lots of things going on. Um, this last, well, yesterday we had a men's breakfast here and had a great time just a fellowship, some good food, thanks to Greg Drummer and, uh, and just a great time connecting. This next Saturday is our Forever Young group. So Forever Young is 50 plus, um, and that includes Sean. He's very excited to be Forever Young. Um, every time I hear that word, I just break into the song in my head, Forever Young. Okay, so... Um, but uh, this week uh, at noon on Saturday, uh, Forever Young is getting together and they're having a, just a, a fun time, kind of a soup potluck, and they're going to have a little bit of a, a contest. So if you'd like to bring your favorite soup, uh, it'll be, uh, there'll be some judges and it's just going to be a fun time. That's noon this coming Saturday. And uh, if you want more information, you can always talk to Duffy or Pastor Sean, and they'll make sure to keep you up to date. On the other side of the spectrum, we have our youth winter retreat coming up in just a few weeks. We got our teenagers hanging out over here. They're excited for it. Um, they're getting together with a few other churches and uh, it's gonna be a real special time. Um, they've got some great things planned. That's February 17th through the 18th. So if you're a parent of teenagers in here, here's the fact. We know that sometimes information does not make it home, okay? No matter how many pieces of paper we give them, um, it doesn't always make it home. So that's February 17th through the 18th. The cost is $90 until February 5th, where it will go up. So that's just a couple weeks away. I uh, wanna make sure you're aware of that. And if you don't know what that big square thing is, it's called a QR code. And you can pull up your uh, camera app and you can scan the screen and there'll be a little link that pops up on your phone. Just click that little button and you'll be able to go right to the page, register online. You can also pay for it online through our online giving portal at whitefishassembly.com slash give. Um, and that's an easy way to do it. So that's gonna be a special time. Be praying for our teenagers as they get going to that winter retreat. And then some people have also asked if you can give towards scholarships. And absolutely, uh, we love that this is a church that believes in the power of these moments for our young people. And so we have a scholarship fund set up. You can just write youth retreats or scholarship on there and um, you can give towards that through the offering today. So thank you for your support of those things. One more thing I wanna call your attention to uh, in the seat uh, underneath you, in a basket, there may be a blue form like this. Last week, I got a chance to share with you about community, about the power of groups, and really how Jesus exemplified that um, in his relationship with the disciples. And so if you've been around for a while, maybe you weren't here last week, but you've really been looking at how can I get more connected? How can I build community amongst the, the believers? Uh, we would love to invite you to be a part of small groups. And so if you're interested, grab that form, fill it out for us, and you can drop that either in the black box at the back of the room or front door, or bring it to me. I'd be glad to grab that from you. I know some of you took them home this week and prayed about it and You've just been asking God about where you might be able to get connected or, or, or even leading because that's one of the options on the other side. Um, but I just want to encourage you, this is the time, this is an important time for us to lean into relationships um, and authentic relationships to, to grow in our relationship with God. Um, that's who we are. If you don't know, our mission statement is growing together through relationships with God and each other. And so we're really doing our best to facilitate that through our groups. Last thing is this, your giving makes a difference. Not only uh, with things like our youth retreats, our kids' ministries down the hall, um, but everything that goes on in our area, the things that we're able to be a part of. Uh, we celebrated a couple weeks ago just the, the incredible generosity of this church in giving for um, through the Christmas season to the warming center and the food bank. Altogether, I think we gave over $6,000, um, $7,000. And I was in the warming center the other day to drop off some more donations, and they just told me how grateful they were. They knew our name. When I said Wife of Assembly, they said, thank you. I want you to know what you gave, what you guys gave, made a huge difference. And so thank you for your generosity. Thank you for giving. And of course, you can give online at whitefishassembly.com slash give. Okay, I'm done talking. Pastor Sean is coming. Oh, Nadine has totally, I'm sorry, Nadine. I forgot to say this. If you are a giver in the church, 
if you, if you gave last year, um, there, we have giving statements available for you. And so to be good stewards, rather than sending all of those out, um, we'd love to have you grab yours at the, uh, in the lobby afterwards. Nadine will be out there and you can just stop by and tell her your last name and we'll get you your giving statement. Now Sean's coming up to share the message today. And uh, let's lean into what the word of God has to say to us. I cannot tell you how good it is to be with you today. Have you ever been sick and uh, it's almost like, all right, I get to stay home and watch television for a few days, a little bit? You ever been there? I, I, I thought, okay, I can't go anywhere, so I'm just going to enjoy watching movies and whatever. And it was one of those, I don't even feel like watching movies weeks. And, and so it is so good to be with you today. Thanks to John Michael and Malachi and everybody who kind of kept things running last week uh, while I was gone. Thank you for your prayers. It was, it really was quite a, quite a week, um, but feel lots better today. Um, I do want to mention to you, this is a day that we nationally uh, recognize as uh, what we call Sanctity of Life Sunday, um, Sanctity of Human Life, and this, isn't, this has nothing to do with being a political statement. It has a lot to do with being a biblical statement, and that is that we believe in all life including the life of the unborn. And, and so I would just encourage you today, although this is, should be a daily thing, that we uh, really do pray uh, for our nation, the direction and the decisions that we make, not only as a nation, but as uh, people, as believers. And so remember that uh, today. I am, I am really... This is one of those days where I'm really, really, really excited about the message, but I'm really, really, really worried that I'm going to blow it. Uh, it. It's one of those times when, oh, I don't want to blow this one because this is really important. I feel so much better uh, than I have the last week or two, but I just got to tell you, I don't have a lot of energy, and so I'm going to sit here and try to fake it for a little while, uh, but I, I really want for God's Word to speak louder than I ever could. And, and that, that's kind of one of the greatest fallbacks. And, and a lot of times the greatest mistakes that a speaker or preacher makes is that they try to speak for God's word when God's word kind of can speak for itself. And so today we're going to read quite a few scriptures and uh, let that happen. A couple of weeks ago, I introduced, I don't know if you remember, and gave you a, a pretty straightforward challenge uh, concerning a series of messages that we started um, that we're going to jump to uh, coming out of the Christmas season where we celebrated the birth of Jesus. And I begin to ask the question, okay, we have talked about the birth of Jesus, and we read in Scripture how he lived on this earth for uh, uh, 33 years, died on a cross, uh, rose from the dead, and went to heaven, and, and I began to ask the question of you, so what? What difference does that make? We, we celebrate in church Jesus, and it was so cool, the worship team, man, and Jeremy and Linnea and, and uh, 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 Jillian, you, you did a great job at leading us in worship, but if you didn't notice, almost every song had to do with Jesus, and appropriately so. We celebrate the person and the life and the teachings of Jesus, that's why we get, that's one of the main reasons we get together on Sundays is to celebrate his life and his teaching and who he is. And so that is so appropriate, but what now? What difference does that make in my life today? And, and what difference should it make? Um, and two weeks ago, I talked to you about our perspective now, that Jesus came to the earth and he's alive, our, our perspective and our purpose 
for living, that it should be different than just surviving uh, this, whatever it may be, however many years you may live, 60 to 100 years, let's kind of give a large span there, however many years that is, what difference should Jesus make during those 60 to 100 years, however long you may be alive? And we uh, read that verse from Romans chapter 12, and I want to put it in your brain again, that says, let God transform you into a new person, changing the way that you think. I don't know about you, but for me to live differently means that I need to change the way I normally and naturally think. And that quote from Greg Ro- Craig Rochelle that I, I quote quite often that says this, our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. And that really is true. What I think about, what I allow to fill this, this space, pretty empty space up here uh, in this part of my physical body, what I allow to go through my brain the most is usually what dictates the direction, how I spend my time, how I spend my money, how I invest my emotions and my relationships comes from how I think. And Proverbs 23, 7 says, for, a man, for as a man thinks in his heart, so he what? Becomes. As he thinks in his heart, that's uh, who he becomes. And, and the truth is, is that our perspective uh, and purpose will dictate the way that we live. Our perspective and purpose will dictate the way that we live. And we ended the day with... 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. I just want to bring you up to speed if you weren't here a couple weeks ago. That says, therefore, prepare your minds for what? For action. Don't you, I, I'm so glad that verse didn't stop there. Therefore, prepare your minds. There's a lot of intellectual people who don't do much for Jesus. But boy, they can quote scripture. Boy, they've went to all the Bible classes. They've even taken Berean courses online. Some of you don't know what Berean is, just the way you can take Bible classes online. They know, have you ever known somebody that knows scripture front and back that can theologically argue you under the table but don't seem to have any kind of an apparent relationship with Jesus outside of those kind of debates. Have you ever known somebody like that? That, that I just wish if what they have here somehow could transfer to here and then to here. Because it's not enough just to know about Jesus. It, it, what's important is that we know about Jesus and that we know Jesus. And if we know Jesus, we are going to want other people to know about Jesus and to know Jesus. And it will change the way we live. Uh, and the prayer that we prayed at the end was, Lord, please let me live this day with your perspective. Let me see people as you see them. You remember that? Somebody please say yes, I remember that. It transformed your life for the last two weeks. Please, please say that. (laughs) Let me do something today to show someone how much you love them. That was the challenge at the end of the day. And my challenge was that you would, on Monday morning, Say, God, take 15 seconds even to say, God, calibrate my perspective today. Let me see people as you see them. Change my perspective. Change my purpose that I'm on this planet for. Help me recognize that and live it out. And I am so excited. This morning I'm going to introduce you to someone that most of you probably don't know. But I am so excited about next week. Uh, We have a friend of Christina and I, 
uh, that is going to be sharing the word next week that many of you uh, don't know. He is a product of the youth ministry that Christina led in, in Polson when we were down there. He's been in ministry under the children's pastor that was with us in Polson, one of the greatest children's ministers, associate pastors you could ever, he pastors in, in Park Hill, in Billings, and, and this guy sat under his ministry, was his youth leader, he's been on staff in Kalispell, Olympia, just an incredible young man who has a heart for allowing the Word of God to change the way we see and treat and love people. And so I am so excited for you to meet a young man that you, I, I can just tell you, and, and, I'm, and he's sitting back there just saying, oh my word, you're putting out these big things that I'm gonna try to have to live up with, or up to, but I can promise you, this is one thing I can promise you, I can't tell you that the sermon's gonna be any good next week, it may be garbage, I don't know. But I can tell you this, not really, that you will, Fall in love with this young man. Uh, I call you a young man. How old are you? 33. You are not. Are you really? You are going to fall in love with this old man <laughs> next week. I want to introduce you, and in just for the sake of next week, Andy, just stand and give one of the parade bows and waves. That's Andy Manley. I want you to meet him. He's going to be sharing a word next week. I am so excited about that. You will, you will appreciate his heart for the gospel, for biblical truths, to transform how we see and how we treat people. I promise you, you are, if nothing else, you are gonna walk away with, wow, I need, I, I need to see people like that. Uh, so you'll, you'll get to meet him next, uh, next week, and, and I know you're going to enjoy that. But today we're gonna continue the thought pattern uh, and talk about a connected principle, if you will, that is important when considering why Jesus came to, why he lived on, and why he died on, uh, why he rose again, and why he left planet Earth. Um, not only will our perspective and purpose uh, dictate the way that we live, uh, the way that we view Eternity um, will determine the, w the way that we live today. And I told you a couple weeks ago that we're going to cover several broad topics, like, like today we're going to talk about eternity, and we're going to talk about something that we don't talk about very much, but I think it's pretty cool to talk about, and that is heaven. We're going to talk about eternity, in particular heaven, uh, next week, uh, and he's going to talk about uh, the, the broader perspective of how we see people, that Jesus came to the earth and his life gave us an example of how to see people. So we're going to talk about some broader perspectives and principles and then we're going to begin to narrow down, okay, how does knowing Jesus change the way we deal with specific areas of our life? Specific circumstances or situations that we find ourselves in, maybe they're difficult, maybe it's with someone at school or work, maybe it's with a family member, maybe it's in our marriage, maybe it's in our anger, maybe it's in jealousy, maybe it's in how we handle finance. We're going to talk about a number of specific things that, that how does Jesus, how does knowing Jesus, how should that make a difference in how we respond and act in this particular situation uh, in our life. And so I'm pretty excited about that. But today we're going to talk about eternity, in particular heaven. If you believe that this life is all that there is and that there is nothing else besides the 60 to 100 years that we live, then there really isn't much motivation to cause us to live differently than anyone else that doesn't know Jesus. There really isn't. If, if it's just this, there's nothing after this life, it's just we cease to exist, and that's it, the end has come, it was fun. There really is no way or no reason to actually think about what we do, how we live, who we serve, uh, anything but just the immediate needs and desires of our life, that's it. And, and that makes sense if there's nothing beyond this life. But let me start off today by giving you a word of encouragement. I, I wanted to begin by making you all 
feel good. This is kind of one of those feel good messages. There's a lot of times when I kind of bring the hammer down, but I wanted to start by just giving you a word of encouragement uh, by saying this, we're all dying. Aren't you glad you came to church? You are dying. I hate to tell you this, but you are in the process of dying. Yes, we all are alive, most of us, at this particular moment, except for the person that I, I'm looking out here and seeing that they are like this. And, and I, I thought for a minute we needed to call a medic, but uh, they're actually just asleep, but that's okay. Um, we're all in the process of dying. It has been proven. There have been studies performed. Performed or preformed? Performed, per, performed uh, uh, by the CDC. There have been uh, studies by committees from the Senate, from the House of Representatives that have come to the same conclusion, and that is this, that 100 out of 100 people on this planet will die. We spent billions of dollars on, on studies that have proven that, that, and you know, of course, the, the, the Congress and Senate and all that didn't come from this perspective, but we know this, that 100% of people will die unless Jesus returns before that day comes that we uh, cease to exist. 100%, the Bible says that it is appointed unto every man and woman wants to what? To what? To die. The Bible says it's appointed to every man and woman wants to die. You, we will die. And so just be glad you came to church to hear that, to hear that word. Uh, when we die, the Bible says this, that we are going to go to one of two places. We are going to go to one or two places. Now, we don't like to think about uh, hell, but the Bible says that mankind, womankind, will, when their life is over physically on this earth, that their life is not over, but that they will go to one of two places. And we don't like to talk about hell. We do not like to consider the thought that God would send anyone to hell. And we're not going to delve into that this morning, but just let me give you a little bit of uh, a, a little nugget is that I don't know that it's that God sends people to hell as much as that people choose where they are going to go by rejecting God and saying, I don't want anything to do with what he is offering me, the gift of eternal life, and therefore it is a choice that they have made rather than a choice of God saying, you, I choose you to go to, there is a place called hell that has been prepared for Satan and, and the demons, his servants, uh, and anyone else who rejects the truth about Jesus and his forgiveness. I never understood, really, even though I do uh, uh, um, a little bit understand that the people who say this next statement really don't, I would hope, don't comprehend what it is they're really saying. But have you ever heard someone say, whether personally you've been there when they've said this or you've seen it on television, hey, I'll see you in hell. Have you ever heard somebody say that? I have. If they only knew what it was they were saying, they would never say that statement. Because if a person truly understands hell, and I'm not all about motivating by people by negative thoughts, but if, some, if, if someone knew without Jesus, I am going to a place called hell, they would do everything in their power to not go there. It is not a place where there's, we're gonna party in hell. That is not what hell is. So there's this place called hell. But at the same time, there is a place called heaven that is offered to every person that ever lives on this planet, has the possibility of going to a place called heaven when their physical life is over. 
And today I would like to talk to you for a few moments about heaven. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has even imagined what God has prepared for those that love him and are called according to his purpose. We cannot even comprehend as much as we try, we can't even come close to comprehending the incredible place that heaven will be. I, I, I'm going to ask you to do this. Um, out of respect for God's word, I know you've been up for uh, a bit today, but would you stand with me just to honor God's word this morning as we read this together? Um, I don't know about you, but it is an honor to have this book, to be able to, and I, and I happened to this morning be reading from uh, a, a Bible that belonged to my grandmother. Hey, Mom, I've got Grandma's Bible here uh, as you're watching in Oregon. But in John chapter 14, here's God's word. Don't let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. And if that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. And then John, when he was exiled uh, to the island of Patmos, he had this vision uh, that spoke to him of heaven. And it says this in Revelation chapter 21. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. And the one sitting on the throne said, look, I am making everything new. And then he said to me, write this down, for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. All who are victorious, listen, will inherit all of these blessings, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. Let's pray. Father, I ask that this morning, in the next few moments, you would speak to us from your word, that the power of the truth that is in this book would change the way we see not just our lives, but eternity. We open our minds to you and our hearts to you today in your precious name. Amen. Why don't you be seated? So, heaven. What won't be in heaven? Now, I prayed about this. I, I, I researched. I read in Scripture and came up with several things that will not be in heaven. I promise you, in heaven, there will be no toilet paper that is fed over the top. It will always be come from the bottom. That is of God. <laughs> there will be no one that stops the microwave before the timer is done so that the next person has to push stop and reset before they use it. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and tell Christina I talked about her today. <laughs> I, I put a thread out to, to, we have a family thread, a full family thread, and I put this out a couple days ago, give me some pet peeves and, and things, uh, and, and I, I was trying to find some funny things, things that would just, I could throw out that everybody deals with, but it became this let's bash on each other thing, and Christina starts writing this list, fishing poles that are in the same place in the garage that have been there all year and not moved. Electricity cords that are on the floor that shouldn't be there. They should be hung up. I mean, I'm just sitting there watching this thread, and then somebody else jumped in and said things. Uh, 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 somebody said, yeah, there won't be dogs that eat Kleenex out of our garbage or your Bibles. There not. Are you kidding me? Did I just hear what I heard when I said I didn't complete my sentence? There won't be dogs. There were some gasps out there. <gasps> 
some of you that almost, if you would have quit listening, you would have let, got up and walked out and left church. He didn't preach scripture today. Dogs will be in heaven. Wow, that was something else. There were comments, there won't be people that leave cabinets open or people, this one I'm still researching in my family on that thread. There won't be people with ugly feet. <laughs> How about these, there won't be people that when you go to pass them in your car, they speed up. <laughs> this is one. There won't be people in heaven that when the plane pulls up to the gate and that ding, goes off, they immediately all stand and stand there for 15 minutes. And you can't get out to get, there won't, uh, this was an interesting one that came on there. And this is actually on a national study in the top 10. There won't be people that clip their fingernails and their toenails in public. No kidding. In the top three in the, mo the biggest study that I, I studied, one of the top three pet peeves, no joke, is spousal bodily noises. <laughs> Speaker phones or FaceTime calls in public places was number three. People that do that. But really getting down to it, what won't be in heaven? There won't be death. There won't be pain. There won't be sickness or sorrow or suffering. There won't be fear or stress or depression or anxiety. There won't be abuse. There won't be divorce. There won't be racism. There won't be violence. Those kind of things will not exist in heaven. And aren't you glad of that? But what will be in heaven, and I'm not going to go back all over all those things and express to you where I stand on those that w things that will be in heaven, but we will know one another and be known. We will be loved and be able to love. We will be in a place that is in unimaginable beauty. I have had the privilege of being in some of the most incredibly gorgeous places in this world. I, I, even just this last year, I was out in Florida and got to play golf on the sawgrass golf course, and incredible. The whole time I was just looking around. This, this is incredible, amazing. We got to be in Cabo and see the beauty of the ocean and, and, and things. I remember uh, years and years and years ago, we were in San Diego, and, and I had the opportunity to go see Shamu, the killer whale. This isn't going to surprise most of you, but I sit there and watched Shamu and the dolphins do tricks. This is what won't surprise some of you. And I cried. Just at the beauty and the power of what I was seeing. But the truth is, is no matter where we go on this planet, no matter what we see, None of it will even compare to the beauty and wonder of what we are going to see in heaven someday. Amen. We live in what I feel is the most beautiful place, at least in the United States, if not on the planet. I, we, we, I hope you don't ever take for granted what we have in Northwest Montana. But what we have in Northwest Montana doesn't even compare with what heaven will be. I can't. It's that no mind has even imagined what God has prepared for them that love him. Here's a good one in heaven. We're going to have new bodies. And everyone said, Second Corinthians 5 says, For we know that if the earthly tent that we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God. An eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, 
because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. <laughs> I won't ask for amens right there. In heaven, we will be re reunited with spouses, with parents, or maybe even children that we've lost. But the most incredible thing about heaven whew, is that we are going to be face to face with Jesus. On earth, Jesus would tell people you can't, uh, God would tell people in the Old Testament, you can't even see my face and live. You can't handle it. But in heaven, we will be face to face with Jesus for eternity. With the creator of this world and all of mankind, we will see him there. Heaven is the absence of everything evil and the presence of everything good and holy and pure. And so what difference does that make? Two things I want to give you real quickly before the worship team comes up again here in, in a few moments. Number one, remember that this world is not your home. <laughs> Our life here really is but a, but a mist, a vapor, a breath, a moment in time compared to eternity. First Peter 2 says that we are just aliens or strangers that are just passing through. Now, on the stage, and most of you have probably seen a, a, an illustration somewhat like this. I've seen this used a, a ton of times. And, and as I've told you before, this year I, I'm really trying to work every week, um, even if it's just to prepare for a message, but uh, even if it's not, to try to really listen to messages from other people and, and sermons. And, and I saw, uh, I was watching and listening to uh, a, a message this week where um, the speaker uses a, an illustration similar to this. So many of you have, have seen this uh, before. This is nothing really new to you. Um, but this is, a, a let's say, a timeline. Everything, this direction is eternity past. There was, there's no beginning. Uh, God has been forever, and this, this rope, it sh I should have had one that would go out the door to where you couldn't see it anymore, that just would represent uh, Jesus always has been, is, and always will be, that, that this is uh, a, a timeline that is past. This, on this side, is the future. This is eternity. This is a never-ending. The rope would just, if we could, just keep going on and on and on and on and on. But in the middle is uh, a, um, this is humanity. The era, era where humans are alive. Eternity, creation, Adam, created, earth, created, Eve, created here. Going through time, somewhere in here was, let's just take whatever events, Noah and, and, and the ark, somewhere in here is uh, the... The, the birth of Jesus and, and uh, the ministry of Paul and uh, uh, his death, resurrection. And then in, in here somewhere is us, you, me. I, I was born, let's say, oh, there I am, right there. That's me. Um, and the, the idea is rather obvious, I, I think, that us, compared to compared to 
is pretty small. However, what do we see when we wake up in the morning? That, that's it. I'm, I don't see this. I don't see this. I just see this. And what I see determines how I act and how I live. And sometimes our vision is so focused on this that we lose sight of this that still is yet to come. Second thing is this. Not only is this world not our home, but we as followers of Jesus should focus on what really matters. We tend to focus on the little things that are part of this orange tape. So-and-so did this and it hurt me. This went on in my life and I'm suffering and there's, I am not minimizing suffering at all. This is what we see. Philippians chapter 3, when Paul was speaking of those who chose to re reject Christ and to live for themselves, he says this in Philippians 3, 19 and 20. Their mind is set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. Their mind is set on earthly things. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 and 17 says this, we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them all and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on the things that can't be seen. Eternity present what really matters when you consider heaven eternity what really matters i had this huge revelation this week i love this i now you know me i'm not real academic intellectual i i, I <laughs> I, I, I struggle trying to study and read and learn. It just, it, I, I, it, I've been, as the secretary for the network in Montana, I've been proctoring uh, tests for those that are um, wanting credentials, and they have got three tests they have to take, the history, governance, and polity of the Assemblies of God. They have to take a Bible knowledge test, and then they have a doctrine test where they have to give the 16 fundamental truths of the Assemblies of God, and not only the truth, they have to give two scriptures that, that support that truth without help, just by memory. I have a lot of grace for those people, because if I had to take the test now, I would probably not have credentials. I would probably, I'm, I'm not real intellectual. But I had a revelation from a different message that I was listening to uh, this week as, as I was home sick, exiled out of my bedroom to on the couch. Paul was writing to the Philippian church in Philippians chapter one, and he was addressing the fact that there were evangelists and preachers that were preaching for personal gain and attention. And they were preaching to build up their own followings while Paul himself was in jail. They were preaching out of jealousy and rivalry and, and pride. Who could have the greatest ministry? Who could be the greatest evangelist and have the most people following them? And Paul addressed this in chapter 1, verse 17. He says, those others do not have pure motives as they preach about Christ. 
because they preach with selfish ambition. And he was right. They were. But then he goes on to say in the following verses, there's this phrase that, that is said. In, in, in verse, and Duffy, you can help me, it's verse 18. We, we, you kind of had this conversation. I was a little bit off, but, but he says this. Yes, they're preaching out of selfish ambition. But what does it matter? Whether their motives are false or genuine, the message about Christ is being preached either way. So I rejoice, and I will continue to rejoice. Now, there's three Greek words. You know me, I'm not a Greek scholar. But there's three Greek words that basically are those that's used here when he says, but what does it matter? Yeah, they're selfish. Yeah, they're prideful. Yeah, they're preaching for the wrong reasons. But what does it matter? And these words are tisgar plan. Everybody say that, tisgar plan. There, you've learned Greek this week. And that's what it means. But what does it matter? Why am I getting so upset about all of these things? Yes, they shouldn't be preaching out of selfish ambition. Yes, they're wrong. However, God's word is bigger than their pride. And I get focused on this. Yeah, but they're wrong. They did this. They wore this. They, they acted like this. They did this to me. But in light of eternity, what does it matter? You're looking at this when there's all this. Tiscar plan. That's what Paul, Paul says. What will this matter a hundred years from now? Will this matter a thousand years from now? The things that I get so worked up about and angry about and ah, this is why am I going through this compared to this? Is this. And it doesn't mean that it's not important. It doesn't mean that we don't fight for what's right. It's just, if this is all you can see, you're missing this. Because someday when we're in heaven, this isn't going to matter that much. It's not going to matter that much. And Paul understood it. <laughs> And it caused him to say, I'm not going to worry so much about here as I am about here. What matters is how I love people, what I give, who I serve, what I say that gives life. Because what you believe about eternity determines how you will live today. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, For the things we see now <laughs> will soon be gone. But the things we cannot see will last forever. Some of the greatest heroes in this room and in this church serve in children's ministries on Wednesday nights. <laughs> I promise you. Roman checks are heroes. Sam Olson, <laughs> David Grundler. <laughs> Every week they ride herd on a bunch of boys and try their best. And sometimes it's hard to not just see this. but there's some in this room or watching online that you're here because somebody didn't, just didn't look at this they looked at this and saw potential in you and picked you up for Sunday school taught you on Wednesday nights, told you about Jesus, your grandma, your grandfather, that prayed for you because they didn't just see this, they saw this. And that's why you're here.
Jesus came to the earth, he lived his life, he was crucified and went to heaven to change our perspective on eternity. What you believe about eternity determines how you will live today. And Jesus came to change how we see the timeline of life. We just stand there. Worship team is going to lead us in a song this morning. Man, there were so many about this morning that were appropriate for the day. And I know, I know what time it is. I do not apologize at all. Man, I, I told you I, I'm fired up about this. I'm going to walk out of here. Actually, I'd say I'd walk out of here and pass out for a couple hours, but we're on our way to Butte for meetings to to interview these people, the kids that are wanting to be in ministry. I, I, I'm so excited about the next couple days. But before we leave, I want us to think about, is this what I see? Not even this, but this? Or am I mindful of this? And then we'll come back and pray in just a few moments. Just sing, here is where I lay it down. Here is where I lay it down Every burden, every crown This is my surrender This is my surrender Here is where I lay it down Every lie and every doubt This is my surrender And I will make room for you To do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, and I will make room for you. To do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to. Wanna be used by you, Jesus, and shake up the ground of all my tradition, break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. Shake up the ground of all my tradition, break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. Shake up the ground of all my tradition. Break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. Shake up the ground of all my tradition. Break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. And I will make room for you To do whatever you want to To do whatever you want to do I will make room for you, Jesus To do whatever you want to To do whatever you want to do you give us your vision we choose to make room for your plan and not mine Jesus and I will make room for you to do whatever you want to to do whatever you want to we surrender and I will make room for you To do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to. They're going to sing actually the last song that they led in the worship set earlier in just a moment. But um, I just ask we pray together and allow God to uh, 
reset us, recalibrate us. That we would make room this week for what's important to him. And if you're in this room and you'd say, man, I've focused on this instead of this, ask the Lord to help you recalibrate, to open your eyes and see, even if you don't understand what's going on, that you keep in mind that there's going to be a day when we are in heaven that none of this really matters comparatively. So, Father, I pray for every person in this room, especially, God, for those that are hurting, that naturally what they see is what's in front of them, what's on their plate. I get it and understand, but, Lord, I pray that you would cause them to open their eyes and say, but our suffering is but a moment, is but a breath compared to eternity. Give some hope. God, for those of us that have even willingly focused on just now and right here, God, that you'd open our eyes to eternity. I love you, Jesus. Thanks for your word. In your precious name. They're going to lead us in this song, and, and can I just, I'll just make the official dismissal now. You can leave now. You can leave 10 minutes from now. You can leave 10 hours from now. I won't be here, but you can sure stay. Uh, just make sure you let God confirm his word to you and, and uh, speak to you today before you go. God bless. Hey everyone, I'm John Michael. I just want to say thanks so much for tuning in and joining us at Whitefish Assembly online. I love that we can be the church, we can be a church family wherever we are, and I hope that you felt welcome all throughout this time. A couple of things to remind you about the phrase we could ever be online at whitefishassembly.com. If you'd like to fill out a connect card, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, we live for you, Jesus. We love that you are part of the family here at Whitefish Assembly. We look forward Jesus, to you back here. Jesus, the name next above week. every God other bless. name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save.